It goes like this. I'll translate in a second, right? أَوَلَمْ يَرَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَتَا رَتْقًا كانت رتقا ففتقناهما وجعلنا من الماء كل شيء حي أفلا يؤمنون Just to translate the meaning of this Have the unbelievers, those who have no faith Have they not known that the heavens and the earth Anything beyond the earth, the sky, the cosmos is the heavens Not as in paradise, the heavens Have the unbelievers not known that the heavens and the earth was joined together as one piece and God parted it asunder and he brought every living thing from water would they then not believe? I want to just quickly mention this how the statement is addressed to a non-believer it ends with something interesting would they then not believe? so it's asked first of all have you not seen it already? have you not known it already? do you not see? do you not observe? do you not know? and then it gives something in between and then it says of course rhetorically or even actually, would you then not believe? So we expect if something is addressed directly by the author of the Quran, which claims to be God, and then it, at the end it says, would you then not believe? There's something information for us to reflect on as a matter of evidence and proof for its claim it's making. So what does the Quran say? It gives you two pieces of information. One from astrophysics and one from biology within the same breath. Every living thing is from water, and that's why we, we, our understanding of biology is that if you want life, you need to have sources of water. That's why when you go, to go elsewhere in other planets, on, in, whether it's go to Mars or something, what are there any signs of water for the life that we know of, carbon-based life? Yes, so we, wrote, we do know now today, for life to exist and subsist and to persist, we need light, water. What about the first information? That heavens and the earth was joined together as one piece. Was that the case? Now we know from our scientific investigations and inquiry, the conclusion is yes, our universe at one point was the earth and everything was joined together. In, in a, it doesn't have to be Big Bang, whatever. It was in a singularity. It was united. Yes. And that got, got separated. Yes. And the separation the Quran describes, this is how the Bedouin Arabs were explaining with each other. The word rataq and fataq. It's like, bang, it's like a forceful, um, um, uh, uh, what's this world? Forceful way of separation. So the Big Bang is described as something that is separated with this force. And it's expanding. Yeah. The Quran does mention expanding, but that's not the point I'm making here. I'm making the point the Quran addresses in this verse yeah. that was the common origin. Yeah. So the Quran is telling us, telling the people who don't believe, yeah. that this is something that you know. Have you not known it? Yeah, no. Now you know, and the Quran is then asking you. Why would you then not believe them? Because the splitting of that, the bringing of life from water, again, is something that you know that this, some, we have come to know now today, is what is required. Did the author of this book, if it happened to be Prophet Muhammad wasallam, did he go underneath the dead volcano and find out the living organisms there and whether they are consistent of water? Did he go in the depths of the most, you know, depth ocean and find out the living organism there still water-based? He hadn't. He was living in a desert. Did he have telescopes? Did he know about redshift? Did he know about all the stars are receding from each other? Of course he didn't. So how would you expect that someone from a desert who was known to be unlettered to give you that information? That's one thing to reflect on. On top of that, as you read the Quran, you'll realize one by one, it gives you, you know, cumulative information for you to reflect and say, why is it that this Quran is giving you all that information from our natural worlds, which I know that is true now, with our scientific advancements of knowledge. We have learned, we have accumulated the knowledge of the Greeks and the Hindus and all the other civilizations and the Islamic civilization. Now we know this is the case. And the Quran is telling us all of that. I am not saying this is a miracle. I am only merely pointing to you a fact that the Quran is offering you the information to reflect on given 1440 years ago or more. From a man who they people knew didn't know about science, technology, anything like that. Okay? And yet even the science and technology of that day wasn't as developed 
to give us that information. Yeah. And if we understand about the principles of intelligent assembly, then why are we simply saying no, it is possible by randomness and random chance? Because in fact, randomness is our ignorance about all the factors that are in place. There is no such thing as random. Nothing is random. Nothing. Nothing is random. Nothing That's is random. What if you win a lottery? It's what if you are, you are you saying you, you're going to know for a fact? When you, win, you win a lottery, lottery yeah. when you win a lottery, do you think it's a random? What happens when you win a lottery? You just buy a ticket, yeah. which happens to be happening, matching with that. Okay? Yeah. It didn't happen by random. It's one of those combinations that yeah. just happened to be there. Well, you didn't know about it. You don't. You don't know. Yeah, yeah it's going but to you, win you. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it doesn't mean it's random. It is already decided. That number is already, brother. This number is already decided. That this is the winning number. Yeah, of course. It's just that you didn't have that number. The number was there. You just picked up this. So you randomly picked the winning. No, no, you didn't randomly pick. So you intentionally. Picked. No, 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 no. You didn't intentionally pick that number. You picked a number which was already designed to be like that. Yeah. But this assembly, this number that is going to be the winning number, it's already decided. Yeah. It wasn't simply something decided like, oh, you know what, the winning number would be something else. They have decided what the winning number would be by what? When they roll, whatever the process to do that. Yeah. Okay? Now, you might think, okay, not the person who picked it up, but the actual machine that generated the number happened by randomness, right? But is that the case? If you have, imagine balls in a particular basket or something, that's what they use, and they blow air and then one by one the ball comes with a number on it and that's the number but guess what this why this is not random if we knew the speed of the air that is pumped in that particular drum if you need the weight the surface area of the ball the height the width the density all of that if you knew all of that you can with your physics and mathematics can determine exactly that this is the number the ball that's going to pick up. It's just we don't know all of those factors because the interaction between all the other balls. Remember, when something like if, if I have a few marbles and I dropped it, yeah. it's not happening by random. All of it is determined by how this particular ball is going to hit the other ball, the nature it's going to hit in terms of the force, how the forces of repulsion or attraction is going to be there. How You know snooker. Think about snooker and this ball for now. When people hit a ball, and then after one, two, three, four, five, six, all these things, and then it goes into the pocket. It's not random, because they knew exactly how much strength and force, and the angle they need to put, and the elevation, all of that is calculated. Because that player has worked it out, he can put, it, put the ball into the hole. These balls that are designed, if we knew all of those factors, just like the player, we could say, it's going to be 29, it's going to be 5. We just don't know that yet. So that's why there's no such thing as randomness. Nothing is random. Everything, if you, if you, it's a mind-boggling concept. So what, but would you, what would you name the state of not knowing what would lead to the... No, no, we don't know all of the factors. Yeah. That's, that's, that, that's, that's our ignorance about the factors. But the, 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 the factors are all there for us to know and learn. That's why the more science we do, the more factors we eliminate. You see, when we do science, we want to establish the root cause of why this happened. Or even forensic science. So we look at a knife that is there with the blood on yeah. and a fingerprint. Yeah. And we can see the video footage of this man who actually did this job. We are eliminating all these factors which are not responsible. And then we say, okay, ah, there you go. This is why we're saying this person is responsible because all of the factors point towards that this is the criminal that did this act. Mm. If we didn't know all of that, you might just even say like, just like the bike popped into existence, you might say the knife popped into existence from nothing and then it just stopped this guy and the guy bled to death. It's imaginable, it's possible according to this theory of probability, it just happened. But the judge and the jury would not buy that. Why? Because of the complexities involved of in terms of these kind of things that are happened. Otherwise, it could simply say, you know what, if the factors determine that, you know what, this man actually slipped, and there was this knife there, like this, you know, and then he got stopped. Understandable. But the way things are described, he was running, and a knife was running behind him on someone's hand. That's not chance. You can eliminate all of that. So we look at this universe, 
we can observe this universe and we can make these inferences. All of these complexities which are organized, assembly, this we can say safely, confidently, reasonably, rationally, that this is all from a maker, from a designer, from an originator. This originator has put this all here in place. It's only this dogmatic uh, scientist who don't want us to believe in it, they're telling us otherwise. You, you are side off by saying science is um, dogmatic, they are feeding us false information, and then you start to qualify um, the Quran's uh, description, the, what you said. Earlier. I'm giving you information. Oh, yeah, you can make split. whatever you make. No, no, you can make your inference based on the data I've provided. Remember, the universe shows us data, yeah. data of assembly. Yeah. You make the conclusion based on what you see about the data. Yeah. Quran provides you data. Yeah. You make the conclusion. Is this data driven by intelligence or randomness or it just happened by someone who just happened to know? Yeah. That is what we're offering you. Yeah, I mean, the question I was trying to ask is, is science right or is it wrong? No, no. Science is say, just a mechanism yeah. in which to understand this assembly, this process to make conclusions which are intelligent conclusions. We won't make a conclusion by looking at all this data and assembly points, design feature of this bike, even though I haven't seen the manufacturer, yeah. but according to the scientific way of thinking, yeah. we would say this is designed by intelligent designer. Yeah. We'll make that conclusion, even though none of us, none of the scientists who are concluding this would have seen it. Yeah. So we observe the data, look at the complexity of the data and the assembly of the data, and we make intelligent conclusions, reasonable conclusions, inferences which should make sense. So this universe is like your big bike, all out there, assembled. You can either, if you want to believe on this happened by nothingness, which you said no, by something that is always there with inherently possessing the attributes of change, making change, the ability to make change, design and so on, it's up to you. But to me, it all makes sense to me, this is me personally, and I'm sure many Muslims will agree with me, that this exhibits that there is behind all of this, not only intelligent, someone intelligent, someone who possesses a will, intentions, awareness, consciousness, power, knowledge as well. Because it requires knowledge to assemble these things. So when I say intelligence, I didn't just put the factor out that this is a lot of knowledge, possessor of knowledge. Knowledge, anyone or anything that possesses knowledge and does things, cannot do these things with this kind of assembly of knowledge unless it's self-aware. So this is where we are making it one step forward with our argument. This is a conscious, self-aware agency able to create our universe and able to maintain our universe in this way and still subs, you know what we call sustain our universe we cannot do that there is nothing that we can imagine that can be seen in our universe which can do that that can bring about our universe and maintain it like that a being or an agency must be such a powerful being such a powerful agent such a knowledgeable agent such an agent of might that is only can be described to be a the creator God, in our sense, who deserves our attention, deserves our praise and our thanks and our glory. And that's what we mean by being someone who is God, who is worthy of all of that. Do you agree with that? Do you agree with as a creator? <clears throat> um, I agree with the fact that um, all of these things did not um, necessarily happen by chance or randomly. No, no, I'm trying to avoid those words. Um, I think where we disagree isn't with the fact that something happened. The Big Bang, obviously, I, I um, recognize that. But the intention part, that's the shaky disagreement. Yeah. That's, which, that's which, the point of contention. Which part? Which part shaky? Like intention, conscious, agent. Um, those type of like qualifiers for it. You find yeah. that shaky. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the point where we disagree because um, it's not it's not being very like clear cut to explore what intention is, okay. consciousness, what does. So we we, we get to a point where is. actually, if it's clarified that you need intention behind all of these things, then there's another one step further you can go with your line of thinking, isn't it? Yeah. Because that is stopping you from 
accepting this as an agency which is personal, which is something that is alive, which is living. So I would say, think about the complexity of information. Information in our DNA, information about our universe, the physical laws and so on. And that level of complexity, since at what point we would subscribe to a view that this is too much to um, assign you know, non-conscious agency, or this is a point we have to assign a conscious agency. Let me give you a simple example. One of the simplest examples is, you find a piece of paper, and it's got written on it, looks like English writing. Yeah. We're speaking English, I'm, I'm, I'm certain you, you know how to read English. Yeah. Tell, what's your name? Michael. Michael, it says, Dear Michael, it was a pleasure meeting you in Speaker's Corner on the 30th, uh, is it 30th? May. On the 29th of May, 2022. Uh, we had a discussion about 5.30 and there were a lot of people there, a lot of cameras uh, working and we talked about intelligence, we talked about agency, we yeah. talked about DNA, we talked about the example of a tree and so on and so forth. Yeah. And you're wearing this 